Welcome to day two of our Lent course at home in Lent, written by Gordon Giles. Today we are looking at threshold and the notion of being invited in. Our reading is taken from Luke chapter 7, verses 37 to 49 and 44 to 46. And a woman in the city who was a sinner having learned that he was eating in a Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet... Who would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him? That she is a sinner. Then turning to the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Yesterday we thought about the front door and how Christ knocks on it or rings the bell, either as friend or stranger. Visitors to our homes knock on the door. Sometimes they come by arrangement, sometimes they drop by, but either way they stand on the doormat. Before any conversation, table fellowship or other activity can take place within the home, they must cross the threshold. Traditionally, a bridegroom would carry his bride across the threshold. The origins of this practice are veiled in history. But one theory is that it derives from a fear of demons at the door who would bring bad luck if the bride tripped as she entered and therefore she was picked up and carried in. Nowadays, this is just a bit of fun, although the notion of luck is still strongly associated with marriage. Moreover, the idea that demons lurk at the door is found in the ancient tradition of blessing the home at Epiphany by chalking the initials of the Magi, C, M, B, Caspar, Melchior and Balthazar, onto the door or door frame. This itself reminds us of that ancient and deadly door danger when the Israelites were told to daub the Passover lamb's blood on the doorposts to avoid the killing of their firstborn, as we find written in Exodus chapter 12, verses 22 and 23. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood in the basin. None of you shall go outside the door of your house until morning, for the Lord will pass through to strike down the Egyptians. Orthodox Jews today still put scriptures on their doorsteps as a sign and reminder of whose law those who live in the house live by. Being welcomed into a house by the resident is a privilege so often taken for granted. Cultural norms may encourage us to take a gift when visiting, although never to expect one. We would expect the host to offer to hang up our coat, and we may remove our shoes for the sake of the carpets. In Jesus' day, the greeting at the door was followed by foot washing, as the famous encounter with the woman who wiped his feet with her hair reveals. Nowadays, we do not wash guests' feet or pour oil on them, but we might well kiss, hug or shake hands with them as soon as they have crossed the threshold, out of pandemic times of course. Not doing so might be considered rude and unwelcoming. The threshold, often marked by a doormat inside and or outside the actual door, is the place of welcome. Indeed, welcome or some other warm greeting is often written on the doormat. As people enter our home, they are welcomed into our place of safety, in which we may take some pride or 
perhaps feel shame. There are people who do not invite others into their homes because they are ashamed of how untidy or dirty it seems to them. Others say you find it as it is and focus on the companionship of being visited. Yet, as Simon the Pharisee was to discover, inviting people across the threshold is to court judgment. It exposes us to criticism, voiced or not, and makes us vulnerable through the potential for report or gossip. Simon has gone down in history as the man who did not properly welcome Jesus and who received strong criticism from his guest. It is the same for us, for while Christ stands and knocks, as we saw yesterday, if we let him in, we let in not only light, but also judgment. So if we do that at the beginning of Lent, we are exposing ourselves to the recognition that we stand judged before our Lord, who in love and mercy will look round our spiritual home and point out the errors of our ways, the dirty corners and the ne neglected nooks and crannies of our conscience. If we let Christ across our threshold this Lent, he will, we hope, lead us to see the faults in our faith. Yet he will not judge and leave, but dwell with us as a constant guide and guardian. For we, as Jesus said in John chapter 15, verses 3 and 5, have already been cleansed by the word that he has spoken to us. Abide in me, he says, as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them will bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. This is to be remembered, that without Christ we can do nothing. But if we let him across the thresholds of our lives, he will walk with us to the end of our days and beyond. So let us pray. Father God, as we look forward to spring and Easter, help us to prepare to welcome the risen Christ by self-examination, honest reflection and creative engagement with your word and the world. Amen.